All right, this is grade three, module one, and this is lesson nine. And in this, uh, we're going to continue learning, the students are going to be learning their multiplication facts, only this time they're going to be adding and subtracting some arrays. And the idea is, really, this is the distributive property. Okay, and if you want to use the word distributive property, you're welcome to because that's going to help out in fourth and fifth grade when we definitely use that vocabulary. Um, and the distributive property allows students to understand bigger multiplication facts by understanding and combining smaller multiplication facts together. And that way we can get, you know, we're going to teach the students how to learn their multiplication facts by giving them some techniques. And one of those techniques is the distributive property. So suppose we have this array, and you can see that this array is a 7 times 4 array, because we have 7 rows of 4. Now obviously, we know the answer is 28, but uh, students can may have a hard time with this. So basically what this lesson is about is teaching kids that you can take one big array and break it up into smaller arrays. For example, we may cut it right here to create two smaller arrays. So this would be a 5 by 4 plus a 2 by 4 array. And so students would see that, oh, look at this, I get this. Up here we have 20 dots in our array, plus down here we have 8 dots in our array, and so together we have 28 dots, so 7 times 4 is 28. Now that's kind of where we're heading to, not necessarily in this lesson, but this is why this lesson is important. It lays the foundation for this kind of thinking that's really going to help our kids grasp their times tables. So in this problem, Dan organizes his star stickers into three rows of four, Right here, Irene adds two more rows of stickers, so that's what this picture is going to is representing, Dan and Irene. And then it says complete the number sentences to describe the total number of stickers in the array. All right, so in this one we have this is Dan, this is Irene, and so together we have one, two, three, four, five. We have twenty stickers. If somebody wanted to, they could have said five groups of four. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the answers are looking for, um, but boy, both of these would work. They could have also said three groups of four plus two groups of four. In my mind, all of these would have been reasonable answers for a student to give. And then in B, it says three fours plus how many fours? Well, up here is our three fours, so down here is our two fours. So altogether, that makes five fours. And so here we could do four, wait, one, four times five equals 20 right here. Really, I don't like this. Because we know that they've, in previous lessons, they've been trained to, to see, think of the rows first. So really this would be five rows of four equals 20. So really in my mind, this should be a four and then this should be a blank, meaning we're looking for the answer five. And that is lesson nine, where we are laying the groundwork for eventually students are going to be seeing an array like this, where it's like an eight by five array, and they are going to be learning how to chop that array into two smaller arrays so that they would get the answer for each of those smaller arrays so that students will see that, oh, eight times five is really... 4 times 5 plus another 4 times 5, which is really 20 plus 20, which is really 40. And so this is how the students are going to build fluency with their multiplication facts.